Hey kiddos, how's it going? Welcome back to video number eight of the 10 part series on how to become a marine biologist. Thanks so much to all of you who have subscribed and liked the video, please do so now. Let's dive into it. This video is all about broadening your horizons. Science and the ocean are everywhere. Many of you know that every second breath we take comes from the ocean because of the amount of plankton that's producing oxygen. And so if you think about how the ocean is impacting us and in every form, in every way of life, from the things that we wear, how it comes on a ship that across the ocean, to the breaths we take, or to the products that we use and ends up in the ocean. We need to be considering the ocean in all parts of our life. Really anything can relate back to the oceans if you think about it. You never know where inspiration might come from, and so it's important to stay curious and broaden your horizons. Recently, my husband and I went to an art gallery in Ottawa. They had this beautiful exhibit all about sustainability. They had these enormous photographs of large landscapes and how they had been affected by humans. And one of them was an enormous garbage pile. And you had to get up so close to it to be like, oh my God, there's people living in there. There are people, little tiny people and dogs. That's how big the picture was. And that's how massive this pile of garbage was that you had to get up close in order to see the little bits of detail and the people and the the human lives that we're living in amongst our garbage. Those kinds of pieces of inspiration that you get from art galleries or science centers or just talking to friends can really help inspire and, and connect you to the oceans in a new way and make our sustainability and the conservation conversation be a bit more relatable into our everyday lives. Being from landlocked Ontario, I can tell you that I didn't feel connected to the ocean that much when I was younger. You know, I, I love dolphins and stuff like that, and, but I didn't really feel a connection to the ocean until I was 15 and went on a surf trip with my mom and my twin sister to California. And then that's really when I felt a connection to the ocean for the first time. People who are landlocked or people who live off the coast, we all have a connection to the sea. And you might say, I want to be a marine biologist, but I don't have the access to go scuba diving or to go ocean swimming or to be able to go supping in, a, in an ocean environment. And that's totally fine. The key thing is to be able to broaden your horizons to understand how the ocean is affecting every one of us, even though we might not live right next to it. So if you're away from the ocean's edge or if you're right on it, I'd encourage you to still broaden your horizons and think about how the ocean's affecting all of us. Art galleries and science centers are great ways to think outside the box and find ways to connect the dots, connect the dots back to the ocean. I listen to a lot of podcasts. Some of them are ocean podcasts and others are not. One of them is called 99% Invisible and it's all about the invisible things that we use every day but we don't even think about how they're designed or how they impact our lives. Some of the episodes you wouldn't, I'm, I'm listening and I wouldn't think that they have anything connected to the sea and then all of a sudden they do. And so don't just think about ocean podcasts, but definitely listen to those. But also look outside the box and you never know where the ocean might come up. Attending lectures and community events is a great way to be able to meet new people and learn about new career options and just get a larger perspective on what's happening out there in the world in regards to climate change or conservation or just simple science, like just really interesting scientists that are speaking about their work. Citizen science is a really cool way of being able to broaden your horizon and get really great experience. I talked earlier about a bio blitz and what that really means or what kind of citizen science means is that scientists can't be everywhere all the time to make observations about the animals that they're studying. And so sometimes they rely on citizens, you and me, to when we're out on a walk or when we're out walking the dog or when we're out on the beach to actually collect data about something specific, whether it be the amount of garbage that you find along the way or around the whales that you might observe. For example, there's the BC Cetacean Sightings Network. Cetacean means whales, dolphins, and porpoises. It's a family of animals. And there is a really important app that you can uh, download. And if you see a whale, dolphin, or porpoise, you can report your sighting. And that information gets fed directly back into OceanWise or the Vancouver Aquarium. And they then use that information to determine where the whales are, are spending most of their time and where the important areas are for us to be protecting. Here in Canada, there's something called Nature Watch. It's the way to plug into some different types of citizen science projects. There's one about frog, uh, invasive plants. There's even one for worms, a worm watch program where they're looking at soil content and what animals and organisms live inside the soil and asking kids to dig around in their own backyard or at a local park and reporting back on what insects they find, including worms. Isn't that so cool? 
Here in BC, we also have some really awesome parks and national parks, and they always have really awesome interpreters. So people there who are running educational programs and taking part in any of those programs will absolutely give you a whole new lens on the forest that you're walking through or the beach that you're walking along. They have incredible knowledge that's so worth it. So next time you go camping or next time you're out at a park, definitely look into the parks programs and see if you can catch one. I also volunteer for an amazing organization called C-Smart. They run after school programs and summer camps, as well as teachers workshops. And these programs are amazing to be able to get weekly experience about ocean knowledge from a real marine biologist. There might be a program like that in your, in your neighborhood. And if you're here in Vancouver, definitely look up C-Smart and enroll in one of the programs. And finally, to broaden your horizon, the best way is to get outside. Get outside and play. There's a new book out called Vitamin N and it's all about how we are lacking a key vitamin. Not vitamin A or vitamin B, vitamin C. It's vitamin N, which is vitamin nature. And it's talking about how kids don't have enough nature in their life and they are actually suffering from a deficiency of vitamin N. What can simply cure that is by getting outside more often in the fresh air and being around nature, not just in a city setting, but actually to go out and like be amongst trees and hear the ground, a non-concrete ground beneath your feet. Uh, whenever you get the opportunity to do that, that is important for your own well-being as well as for your own curiosity. And I think that is the best exposure you could possibly get to keep your horizons broad. So thank you so much for watching this one. Definitely go out and get outside this week if you can. And I look forward to hearing any comments or questions you have about the 10 part series so far, or just simply what you're thinking about as a marine biologist. Is this ringing true for you? Is this locking in? Are you thinking, yes, I wanna become a marine biologist even more now after watching these eight videos? Or are you thinking, you know what, maybe this isn't right for me, or I'm gonna take marine biology in a totally new and creative path, and that I really wanna hear about. So please let me know your thoughts and how this is landing for you. Um, it's important for me to get that feedback so I know what that this is you know, working. And if it's not, please let me know and I'd love to hear more of your thoughts on how these videos can become more relevant for you. So ask your questions below. Please like and subscribe, share with all of your friends who has ever mentioned that they are interested in becoming a marine biologist. For parents who are watching, please share this with maybe any camps or clubs that your kids are involved with, girl guides or scouts, or maybe with your PAC or your school board. I'd love for this, these messages to get out further and further to the different kids that might need them. So please uh, help me spread the word and thank you all so much for watching and look forward to seeing you at the next video. Number nine. See you later guys.